It's 5.30 and we're off to what will hopefully be our last day in the Sierras. Sun's coming up. Oh, well, that big mountain there is where the avalanche came down yesterday, right across the creek from us. It's just... <laughs> uh, we were sudden in our tents going like, oh my god, this could have been this hill. We were walking through so much avalanche damage on the way here to the campsite. And you think, oh, this must have happened a few weeks ago. It's going on right now. There are more, and there's still more river crossings, but nobody, even, they're not even on the map, these things. These are not normally rivers. Luckily, they're not too strong yet. Lovely little meadow we're walking past. And the mountains behind it. This would be such a pretty area if it wasn't trying to kill you. And it really is trying to kill us. I mean, Brian was saying the same thing, especially with that avalanche last night. It's like the Sierra keep saying, get out, get out, get out. And we're trying. But they're not making it easy. Like, I mean, once again, we are not on a path because, well, Pass might be somewhere in this lovely meadow that is now a swamp. We came here to hike the PCT and we're not hiking the PCT because absolutely no way of telling where the cra where the hell it is. This is just blindly stumbling through snow and uh, hoping for a good outcome. <laughs> There is, there is being brave and embracing the sack and then there is being stupid and putting yourself in harm's way and we're not crossing that line. But these are springing up everywhere. I don't know what it is. They have a faint oniony smell in the area. They're massive. I started to climb up to the junction and the spikes are coming off. Actually, this path seems dry, and the whole hill behind us seems dry. But, uh, the views are magnificent. Climb up uh, to the trail trunk, it's quite tough, and you have no energy left. There's some nice views of where we came from, so... How are you doing? Ooh, yeah, I was out here. Ooh. <laughs> The yeah. Austrian is like a little goat. Yeah. Got me up there already. The other two are way ahead of us. We just, as I said, I don't know what, I mean, me specifically, I, I have no energy left whatsoever, even on the flats. After a refreshing scramble through, yeah, all of this, not knowing where we were heading, we have finally found a sign. Thankfully, this is part of the problem with <laughs> not being able to see the trail. But if you have to hit a junction, it's quite easy to miss the junction. This might be Bullfrog Lake. It's hard to tell. Everything's frozen. We're following a very established footpath trail now. In the hope that the people in front of us knew where they were going. Very pretty though. If only we weren't so exhausted and could enjoy all this a bit more. Okay, so this is Bullfrog Lake. A bit bigger, a bit more deserving of being named. Still a snow down there. Ooh, Climbing up Harrisage Pass is really quite spectacular. But I could so do without it. We just stopped to have some breakfast to actually, you know, get some food in us and some energy, but I don't think it did much. So, head, only a thousand foot. Huh? My head and stay up. Yeah. Sure it's back. Again. I'll let you go. So, after scrambling up this hill, because that snow was already too soft, we have finally found the actual trail. And we were pretty much on the top now, so there's not much point of actual trail, but yeah. Seriously, 
There's nothing easy about any of this. Beautiful, yes. Easy, no. Finally, reached the top of Kerasaj Pass. Way down Kerasage Path. As easy as everything else we've done so far. <laughs> we met a ranger on the way up and uh, she actually thanked us for the decision to quit the Sierras. It's just... Well, we've seen so many people come the other way. It's just crazy. Saying our farewells to the Sierras. Hopefully we'll meet again in a better year. And we're far away down to Onion Valley. Looking very down at the moment. <laughs> but actual path. The micro spikes are off. They're clinking along behind me on my axe. There's a valley, civilization, food, beer. There's a deer down there in the trees with a collar on. There he is. Or she. Hello. What you doing, beautiful? Eating clearly. We set off from the campground, carried on on uh, halfy, halfy. Um, snow fairy trails to the other the middle vidette of our campground which was also snow free but also quite damp and flooded and snow melty and then began the climb quite a brutal climb up to the junction which was as you saw buried in snow and a bit of a guesswork to figure out where to go from there and as was the entire trail, to be honest. I mean, luckily there were, f there were plenty of footsteps to follow. In a very narrow line, whoever walked these footsteps before us was a ballerina, I think. They put one foot exactly in front of the other, instead of next to each other. <laughs> it's walking quite difficult. But anyway, we passed Bullfrog Lake. We passed Bullfrog Lake. Somebody's playing with the lights behind me. And, um, yeah, just, I mean, the climb up to Carousel Pass, again, Probably because of the snow and all the switchbacks being ruined, it was utterly brutal. I mean, it was just scrambling straight up a hill again. We, we didn't know where the pass was at any point until about here, finally. So the last couple of switchbacks were quite pleasant. And um, when we reached Kerasage Pass, in our usual one mile an hour pace, and then began the climb down, which was a bit slushy, a bit hairy, quite frankly. Sorry, this is Carousel Pass, obviously not that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, yeah. Well, by now you know I'm not the greatest fan of slushy snow, especially not on steep hills, and these hills are all steep. And it continued to be pretty snowy and, you know, invisible trails and stuff until Gilbert Lake here, where it became a bit more snow-free in bits, but even, even on as late as these little switchbacks here, we were still occasionally scrambling. It's just, there's a lot of snow and very little um, visible trail everywhere. But we got into Onion Valley trailhead where we got picked up, driven to Independence and um, yeah, got picked up by a nice gentleman who just sho shoved us hikers around for fun really. Um, got driven into Independence from where we took a bus to Bishop, where we have been ever since. Hi guys! Hey. We're still here, alive. <laughs> Just. Just, yeah. This is the summary for week 12, even though it's not quite happening at the end of week 12 because of everything that's been going on. Um, we're a couple of days late. Mm -hmm. 
the obvious thing to talk about, I think, this week is um, snow hiking, night hiking, and obviously why we decided to not carry on in the years. The three are intimately connected. Yeah. Before we did the dreaded crossing, we we were going to discuss what we were going to do in Independent because it wasn't enjoyable anymore. No. It was Did like trudging through a foot to two foot of snow after 12 o'clock every day and it was... The snow entirely dictates how you hike. No, but you know, it, is, it happens. The landscape entirely dictates how you hike. You know, we're not, we're not naive. We're not saying, oh, we want to do 60 miles a day. We don't care if it's, you know, through swamps. But it, it dictates it in a way that makes it very, very difficult for us at our level of skill to, to, to get anywhere because the snow was as Brian said. I mean, from about lunchtime onwards, it becomes unpleasantly slushy and tedious and incredibly tedious. We were constantly, uh, about, I mean, between, uh, I'd say between Lone Pine, uh, the Horseshoe med Meadow area, and Kirasage Pass, where we got off, about 80% of the PCT is covered in snow. And when I say 80% of the PCT, I mean there's snow everywhere, and the PCT is somewhere in it. So you are constantly, Second guessing where you are, slipping where you step, post holding. It becomes an exercise of reading the map, looking at gut hips, taking ten steps, reading the map. It just there is no there's no flow to it. There, there, there seems no purpose to it. <laughs> it's not stupid. I mean, purpose is of course to carry on hiking, but it's really difficult when you have. <laughs> Sorry, I feel. Um, when you have basically no idea. Uh, where you're going half the time, and I don't, I don't like n navigating just by an electronic device. I'd like to, you know, just occasionally, just walk because I'm confident that that's where the trail is. But everywhere looks the same once the snow is on it. Um, it's just trees and rocks and snow. And this brings me to the whole night thing because, of course, to avoid the slushiness that makes it so unpleasant to walk and, and really, really difficult. You'd have to start quite early because the snow gets hard there, not always hard, but hard there overnight. But then you have the situation where you're night hiking in an area that looks the same in all directions and has no paths. I mean, we did that on the way to Whitney. Yeah. That was quite frustrating, I think is the word, the, 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 the word to use. It's not difficult or dangerous or anything, it's just kind of I mean, you might as well blindfold yourself, spin around three times and start walking and walk for the best. That's how it feels because you're constantly just kind of stumbling. Stumbling through the dark, stumbling through the snow, stumbling over rocks. It, yeah, it's it's something for the diehard people who just want to yeah. go through for the sake of going through. I, we have come out here to hike the PCT. <laughs> somebody asked us that actually. Aren't you enjoying it? Yeah, somebody asked us, are you hiking the PCT? And, and I replied, well, most of the time when we can find it, because it, that's what it felt like. We're not hiking the PCT. We're hiking around in the woods somewhere in the, the vicinity of the PCT, we hope. I mean, we've ended up on ridges like 50, 60, 70 feet higher than the PCT and having to climb down again because, you know, we're, we're according to the maps, we're very close. But Unfortunately, on completely the wrong side of a boulder field or of a ridge or something like that. It's, yeah, it, and then of course the green crossing started, so it's just... And it's not me being sexist. Heidi's not that strong. Not as strong as me. No. And... I'm half his size in every, in every dimension. It's... I have, if you love your, your partner, you'll, you, you'll, you'll put your life on the line for it, and that's what we did. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not having that again. I'm not endangering myself or somebody else. And, and even if Brian wasn't there, I mean, technically, if I'm going out there knowing I'm not physically equipped to do these kind of stream crossings, I will be endangering somebody's life, whether it be Brian next to me. Or a rescue person. Or the rescue person that has to come and bail me out and, and 
get a dead body out of the sea. That's not, that's not going to happen. I mean, we have, I think I've mentioned it before. When we came off Karasaj Pass, we met another ranger, that's the third ranger we met, or the third group of rangers, one of them was a group. Um, and she was chatting away to us, and, and we told her we were done, we're out, um, we're skipping ahead. And she actually thanked us for that decision, and that really kind of makes you go like, that's the kind of people that will get the call. Somebody's missing, somebody's being swept down the road or whatever, the road, the stream even. Um, and you just think, Don't why? get me wrong, I sound a bit flippant on, on when I fell down. But if I wouldn't have grabbed the rock in the middle of the, of the, of the, the river, whatever you want to call it, I would have been dead. Quite, quite probably. Because sooner or later, one of the swirls would have, you would have Took hit his, yeah. his head on a rock. I knocked him out and then that's that. Might have gotten lucky 200 feet further down, who knows, but it's just, no, uh, yeah. Because it ran across my mind, Sh should I give up when I was in the water? Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, trying to save me life. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's a bizarre, it, it still just hasn't sunk in. It was a bizarre experience that just, yeah. it was a wake up call, definitely. We are not, I mean, there's people going through this year as well. There's people going through these dreams. I'm not saying it's impossible, but we've always said, you've got to go and make your own assessment of the situation. Yep. We went, we assessed. We could do Whitney, we could do Forrester, we were probably foolish to do both with the equipment we have, but it was possible. And we thought we could just about cope with it. The streams, we cannot, well, I cannot cope with, yeah. that's that. You know, that's the end of it. So, on to money. So, um, yes, we are, as you know, we're skipping ahead, hopefully out of the stream range. Not out of the snow range, because that's impossible, but yeah. snow, you know, while we don't like walking in it, it's it's manageable. But, yeah, the streams were done with, sorry. Um, Money-wise, of course, technically we didn't speak, spend anything, <laughs> because we were out there for, like, 11 days. 11 days, I think. But I've included the day in Bishop Two um, days. into this week's expense rather than next week's expense where they technically belong. But you know, we have to have some figures to show you. So that means we have a resupply of $174.38. Oh, yeah, we went shopping in once again. It happens. Uh, we spent $76.45 on town food because we deserved a treat. Well, two treats, in fact. Uh, $104.36 on equipment this time. That The bulk of that cost is me, obviously, because I lost my hiking pool in the, um, in the river crossing. And then discovered that the other one had also broken. So I've got a new set of hiking poles now. We spent $202.92 on accommodation because we stayed in a hotel for two nights. Uh, that was expensive, but it was actually the cheapest, cheapest place in, in Bishop. Fish. Bishop is an expensive place, unless you go to the hostel, of course, but because of the bride's condition, we, we felt he needed access to, you know. Showers. Private, private shower, private bathroom. Yeah, not getting more than all. Sleeping in a, in, a, in a bed as long as he wants to, so yeah, that's that. ATM charges of $2 again. Um, donation of twenty dollars. That was uh, to to help the gentleman that that runs like us everywhere, up and down Lone Pine and, and Horseshoe Meadow and Onion Valley with his fuel. And we spent thirteen dollars on transport, and that was the the bus from Independent Bishop, which is six dollars fifty a person. Again, all the buses in in this area are quite reasonable. Um, yeah, they are quite reasonable, but you have to have to exact exact change. So please, you know, don't. If you yeah, show it's up, it's not the driver's fault. It's the they, company they who can, actually makes this. They can do nothing about it. So you know. if, you, if you're paying four dollars for a ticket, don't give them twenty dollars. Because you won't get anything. Won't change get any because it's machined. Yeah. So we spent in this week five hundred and ninety-three dollars eleven cents, which isn't too bad actually, given how much we indulged in Bishop. Yeah. To soothe our skills. So hopefully, um, um, yeah, 
then the, the next thing to come is we need to get out of Bishop into South Lake Town. Yeah. And then, and then get on the trail. Get back on the trail. And do some, I don't know, hiking perhaps? <laughs> All right, catch you later, guys.